Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to do a chainmail bracelet. Now, I call this particular bracelet River Stones, but what it really is, it's a European form one done in what's called a stepping stone pattern. You get this nice bracelet with a pretty weave to it, or a pretty wave to it. And it's a lot of fun to make, and it's also pretty easy. Um, it's much easier than it may look. So we'll go ahead and do this bracelet today, and I will also show you some other bracelets and other gauges, and explain what I did a little bit differently for those. And go ahead, once I show you all of them at the end, go ahead and vote for whichever one you think you, you like the best. Um, before we get on with the supplies, if you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It keeps me really encouraged to keep making these videos for you. Um, if you don't already subscribe, hit the subscribe, hit the bell button, and I'd appreciate that as well. Um, if you'd like to see more chain mail videos, put a comment down there. And now that I've had my commercial, <laughs> let's go ahead and check out the supplies we need for this. I have four millimeter inside diameter. 18 gauge jump rings and these are 18 gauge AWG size which means that the wire thickness is one millimeter so I have it in two different colors now I also have an 18 gauge AWG jump ring that is seven and a half millimeters inside diameter and you could also work with seven millimeter inside diameters I have one clasp. Um, I do have a, a video on making different kinds of clasps. This is one I made. Use a clasp of your choice, obviously. Um, for pliers, I have two sets of pliers. You can use chain nose, bent nose, flat nose, just anything but round nose. And if you're curious as to the white stuff, that is something called Tool Magic. I do have a video on that if you're interested in how and why I use that. Um, that's pretty much it for supplies. So let's go ahead and get mailing. I'm going to do this in two different colors so you can see the pattern more easily and also I think it's kind of pretty. I have closed up my copper rings and I've opened up all my silver rings and it starts out as a basic European 4-in-1 pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my silver ring, I'm adding two of the closed copper rings, <laughs> if I can get it, there we go, <clears throat> two closed copper rings and I'm going to close up the silver ring. So it looks like this. Now I'm going to take a scrap piece of wire and you can use a twist tie, you can use a paper clip, you can use whatever. And I'm going to um, hang it on the silver ring and this is just so that I have something to hang on to. It just makes it easier. All right, I have what I call my mouse ears so this is these are the ears and this ends up being the forehead of the mouse and it's kind of hard to see at the moment but here we go so i've got another one of my silver jump rings i'm going to go down through this first copper ring scooch around the back and go up through the other copper ring so i'm going through both of the ears now I'm going to put on two of the closed jump rings. Then I'm going to close this up. I do have the video, like I said, on the European 4-in-1, so if you really want to see that particular weave, I suggest you go see it. I'll put up a link to it. But this is just so you can get an idea. Okay, so I've got two sets of rings on going to do it uh, two more times just so you can get the hang of it for a refresher in case you need it. I've got my silver ring. I'm going to go down through the first ear, up through the second ear. So I'm going around and up through and I'm going to add on two of the closed jump rings and close up the silver. If I can get the silver closed, there we go. And one more time. So I've got it looking like this. I'm going to pick up an open silver, 
put it down through the first ear, around the back, and up through the second ear. And let's try that again, up through the second ear. And then I add two more closed jump rings. You are going to do this for a while. Now it goes pretty fast, but you're going to do it almost twice as long as you need for your bracelet. The reason being is this particular pattern is going to shrink up quite a bit. So do your European 4-in-1 until it is almost twice what you need. Um, go ahead and do that. Um, I'll come back and we'll show you the next step for this particular bracelet. Okay, I've finished my length of Euro 4 and one and again, it's, you know, it shrinks up quite a bit, so you need uh, a fair amount to start. Now, I've flipped over my, um, my weave, and you can see here's the, the very beginning, and now instead of the forehead showing, the chin is showing. <laughs> I take my large jump ring, which is the 7.5 millimeter inside diameter, 18 gauge, and I'm going to go through 8 of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I'm going to close up my gold jump ring. And it looks like this. Let's just check that I've got eight on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do I have seven or eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do have eight. Now the next part, I'm going to flip this just because it's easier to do it always from the right. If you're a right-hander person, always from the left. If you're left hand, do whatever is uh, comfortable for you. Now we need to know where to put the next large wire. Since I have my last of the copper wires that's going through this one, I need to find its opposite. So in other words, wherever the next, in this case it's forehead, and it happens to be this ring. So this ring is the opposite of this last copper ring going to take another one of my large jump rings and this time I have to kind of go up through the bottom. So one and it's easier if I kind of let it uh, hang a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. And if you are at all concerned about how many rings that you've put on, you know, always count them after you're done. So now you can even see the start of our Riverstone pattern. Again, one more time, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to find the ring that is opposite of this last one I put on. And that ha happens to be this, let's see. So this ring and it's this ring that's next. And again, in the beginning, it, it might seem a little bit difficult to figure out which one is uh, the mate of the other one. So actually, I see that the mate of this one is actually this one. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And close this one up. Now you've got your third one. Go ahead and do this through the end of uh, your chain and then we'll come back and do the next set of steps. All right I've got all my gold rings on except for my last set of eight. I'm going to leave this last set of eight without a gold jump ring yet because during this next step it's going to contract a tiny tiny bit more 
and that will let you know if you have if you can stop with this last date or if you need to add a, a just one more set in addition to this all right so let's go back to the beginning and you will take a another large gold jump ring and you are going to feed it through every ring that you put your original gold jump ring through now don't catch the gold ring whatever you do <laughs> don't catch it and check to make sure that you've gone through all of them and also check to make sure that you haven't accidentally like grabbed an extra one so I see I've gone through all of them and I did not go through the other gold ring so again don't want to go through the other gold ring all you want to do is go through the coppers and there we go I will do one more so again I grab myself a gold ring and I'm going to go through all of the same ones that this gold ring went through and I'm just not going to grab the gold ring so make sure that you've got all the rings I do and close it up now do this through the length of your chain and then you'll be able to assess at the very end whether you need an extra set of rings or not or whether it's fine and you can take off this set of eight okay I've doubled all my jump rings here and now it's ready for the last set you should at this time have checked to make sure that by the time you've put on your last um, set of gold rings that it's going to be the right length if it's uh, way too short then go ahead and add a second set of eight to the end um, what if you end and you only have, for example, six, then you can just add another couple of jump rings on to the end to keep doing the Euro four and one until you get All eight. Right. Now it's time to go ahead and put on the last set. So again, find the opposite and put on your golds. Four, five, six, seven, and eight now you may get the question of well can i use multiples of seven or six or whatever or ten do i have to always use eight um no and it really all depends on what you look like um, a ten is going to contract your jump ring or your bracelet even more a seven is going to make it just a tiny bit looser um, it all depends on what you like and how much of a um, a meander you want in your bracelet so you can just try it out and see what see what you like I just do it in eights because I think it's uh, a really nice look so here we go there's the completed set of the river stones which is really just a stepping stones euro four and one now we've got to put on the clasp so let's take a look at doing that I next. am going to use a copper hook and eye clasp and I'm going to pick up one silver jump ring and I'm going to put it through the last of the silver jump rings or the first whichever the case may be one thing that you don't want to do and I'm going to do it on this side because it's easier to see you don't want to put it through two rings so in other words you don't want to catch one of the, the coppers and you also don't want to put it through so you've got one dangling off the side like that so make sure that all your rings are flipped over, put on your silver, and then put on your clasp. Now the next step is you can go ahead and put on or um, attach your hook or your, whatever your clasp is to the last of the silver jump rings. Um, I don't like to do that because it's too easy to get other jump rings caught into it so i will put on a second jump ring or another jump ring i should say and go through this last silver now depending on what kind of clasp you're using for example if you're using a toggle clasp you may need to have an extra set of jump rings on or however your particular clasp faces 
um, will depend on whether you need one or more extra jump rings. So I've got it like this. I've got my extra jump ring on the end. I've got my clasp on this end. And to clasp it, all I need to do is go through. And I've got it. Now, one thing you want to make sure is when you do this, you don't end up twisting your bracelet. In other words, don't put it on <laughs> like this. Um, it's kind of easy to do sometimes where you accidentally put it on. Not quite right. Twisted. But you can easily put it on. So there we go. I am going to now show you some, the same weave in some different gauges so you can see what it looks like in something other than 18 gauge. And I'll also show you another color pattern. Okay, so here's today's bracelet and this is all done in 18 gauge. Now let's check out something done in 16 gauge. So this is uh, 16 gauge for the pink rings, but the silver I used 14 gauge, and I only used one of these. So one of the 14 gauge. Now let's check out a 20 gauge. So here is a set done in 20. Now the gold rings are 20 gauge. The green rings are a 18 gauge, and I do have those are doubled. And if you can see, um, the green rings are proportionately smaller than these. So we've got a, a tighter curve. These rings here, the 14 gauge, are proportionally larger. So I've got more of an open weave. And then this is what I would call the moderate weave. So we've got these in the different gauges. Now let's check out something with a different pattern. In this particular one, and this is done all in 18 gauge, let's put it up some, you can see where the gold is always on the outside. The, these gold rings are always on the outside. And to achieve that, what I did is when I was doing the European 4-in-1, one, one ear would be gold, one ear would be purple, and I'd do that for eight rings. On the ninth ring, then I would do purple and gold. So I'd switch the, the ear, that was the gold, continue on for eight more. Then on the next one, again, I would switch where the gold was. So the gold appears on alternating ears, so to speak, in groups of eight. And that's how I got this pattern where the gold is always on the outside. So which one of these do you like best? Do you like the original one we did today? Do you like the pink one? Do you like the purple one? Or do you like this little 20 gauge one best? Uh, let me know. I'm curious. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more chain mail, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. You can subscribe and hit the bell button. I'd appreciate that as well. Um, otherwise, this is Gail signing out, saying have yourself a wonderful day. Bye!